as I start method number two for adjusting my focus distance, I am going to close my render view. I'm not going to need it for a little bit. I'm also not going to need to see through my camera, so I will drop this down. Now it's at the bottom of my screen. What I am going to need is my four camera view so I can see all of my orthographic views. The tool that I'm going to use is in the Create menu. I am going to go to Measure Tools and create a Distance tool. The Distance tool will automatically generate a distance between two points. I can designate the camera as one of those points and any object I want as the other. Simple, right? Good. The way the distance tool works is this. I start it running and I click two times. I'll use my top view for this. And I'm just going to click in two completely random places. Then I will move back into my selection tool. The distance tool generated a locator. That's locator one, locator two, and a distance dimension. The distance dimension will calculate the distance between the two locators. So I'll take the first locator and I'm going to move this over to the camera. I'll do that in the front view and in the top view and I am aiming to put it right where the lens connects to the camera body. That looks pretty good. So there's locator one. Locator two, I am going to put on the object of my choice. I know I did this first chameleon in my last video, but maybe I want to focus on the central fire hydrant. That sounds pretty good to me. There is the central fire hydrant. I'm going to take locator one and make it the child of my camera. I can do that by middle mouse dragging and dropping in the outliner or by selecting the locator first, the camera second, and pressing the P key on my keyboard. Locator two, I would probably make the child of this fire hydrant, but I'm not sure that I do want it to be the star of my scene just yet. I may change my mind, so I'm going to keep Locator 2 as a free agent. The big thing that this means is that when my camera moves, the distance dimension automatically updates. Pretty cool. All I need is a way to get this distance dimension's output into the camera's focus distance. For that, I'm going to select the distance dimension and I'm going to use a window that we haven't really talked about and I don't know if anybody's really talked about it with you. It's called the node editor. The node editor is designed to let you see the way that your informational nodes connect. So in this case, when I had the distance dimension selected, you can see that I get the distance dimension. There's the object node. There's the shape node. So because I had the distance dimension selected, now I can see its shape as a different object, and that is pretty cool. We'll probably talk about the node editor more in the Maya 4 class, where you have to do rigging and nodes become really important. For now, just as a taste, because I'm in here, I can see the object and the shape as two different pieces. That's great, because the shape is the thing that actually contains the output of the distance dimension. So if I click on my camera to select it, there's my focus distance. I can middle mouse drag the shape node over here. And when I see a white rectangle around the focus distance, I can drop it off. And now they're connected. And it was that easy. Again, the shape node, middle mouse drag, drop right over here when you see the white box. With that, I can close the node editor. 
And now every time I move the camera, that focus distance automatically updates. So let's see what this looks like in the Arnold render view. First we have to wait while my computer renders, but our goal is that this fire hydrant right here be in focus. Fingers crossed. Oh, and it looks like it is. I'm so pleased. If I decided that that was not my ideal main character, I could just take my locator and move my locator. I'll move it over to this central chameleon right here. And now when I render again, this central chameleon should be in focus and everything else should be a little bit blurred. And now as I increase the aperture size, I can really focus on that central area. You're probably wondering what the aperture blades, curvature, rotation, and aspect ratio do. The aperture blades are supposed to simulate the opening and closing mechanism on a camera lens. So I believe that a standard camera lens has five blades. And you may see a difference at this point, you may not. I admit that at this point, I'm not a photographer, and it does start to get a little bit complicated for me. If you are a photographer, if you're somebody who really likes cameras, this could be really cool for you, and maybe you'll come back and explain it to me a little bit more simply. And I would love that, that would be amazing. But if you're like me and you're new to cameras, and you just want to go through this, you can mess with just the focus distance and the aperture size and be perfectly happy. But yeah, the blades are supposed to simulate the opening and closing mechanism in a standard camera. Once you get the aperture blades to show up in your render, the curvature will change them from being perfectly straight to giving them some curve, and the rotation will let you tilt them. So if you do want to explore these a little bit further, that's great. Absolutely go for it. That would be really cool. And if you don't, that's fine. Just try to get a little bit of depth of field into at least one of either your day or night renders. Honestly, once you see it working, you'll probably want it in both. And that would be amazing. I would love to see it in both of your renders. So go for it. Set up a couple of really nice depth of field renders in your day and night scenes.